Hello, my name is Majegs and I recommend games for busy people so that you can stop searching and start playing. And today, I'm recommending Dredge. Now on the surface, Dredge appears to be a lonely fishing game just soaked with atmosphere. But peer below the surface, and you'll find a thrilling experience staring back at you with hundreds of thousands of eldritch eyes. You see, you arrive in Greater Morrow. Does that look like it spells Morrow to you? It's clearly Marrow. Replacing the last fisherman who vanished. Now the townsfolk there are guarded with their secrets and seem to think it's best for you not to know what happened to the previous fisherman. So like any good newcomer to town, you quickly set to work selling fish to the local fishmonger. As you start to build up your savings, you'll reinvest it into your boat so that you can catch more exotic fish and travel to more exotic locales. And as one of the few people willing to hang sail and travel to the horizon, all the townsfolk will have various quests for you, anything from bringing them certain fish, to looking for particular treasure, to even delivering parcels to different towns. And as you venture further out, you venture further from safety and sanity. So lash yourself to the captain's chair, make sure your halogens are beaming, and join me on this dive into why Dredge is a good game for busy people. Now let's be upfront here, this is my spoiler warning for Dredge. It's absolutely loaded with mystery, so I'm gonna do my best to keep the spoilers contained to only what was shown in the trailer, but still, if that makes you nervous, then here's the short and simple of why I'm recommending it. It's both relaxing and thrilling at the same time, it has extremely well thought out systems, and it delivers on the Lovecraftian eldritch horror in a subtle way without capturing the tedium and hofty confusion that often accompanies such experiences. How do I pronounce H-A-U-G-H-T-Y? Hmm. Spoiler warning over, I'm proceeding. Fishing games by their nature are usually relaxing. The repetitive nature of finding the designated fish zones and then casting your bobber and hounding your fish until it's reeled in is a simple therapeutic activity. Except for Red Dead Redemption 2. That fishing game was physically painful and not enjoyable for me at all. Dredge nails the fishing experience, as you would hope. The mini game is just engaging enough to be fun, but not so complicated as to be overly tedious and require too much attention. It goes like this. There's a little bar. If it passes green and you push the button, you reel the fish up faster. If there's gold, then you get a much better quality fish. Different types of fish will have different patterns you have to match, and there are other slight tweaks that come about in the game, but otherwise it's the same equation of clicking the button when it goes through the green area. Traversing the sea is absolutely phenomenal. The developers didn't include fuel or wind systems that could hinder your traversal or suck up your resources, so you'll always be allowed to travel as far as you want. Of course, you'll be constrained by a completely different beast. One that normally arrives calmly and lulls you to sleep. You guessed it. Darkness. When the sun goes down and the lights fade, the ocean gets weird. More than weird, the ocean gets unnatural. Is that a friendly ship sailing on the horizon? Or was it just your imagination? Are the lights in the distance a friendly beacon or a sinister trap? Do the bioluminescent fish shimmer with hope and beauty? Or are they warning lights ushering you to make haste back to safe waters? As your captain ponders these questions, his sanity flickers and fades with the light until distinguishing reality from imagination is impossible. Of course, I know you, dear viewer, and you'll be sure to make it back into the light of the harbor before that happens. Right? These facets come together to create a game that simultaneously relaxes and excites. You'll kick back and mentally drift off as you're fishing. Sometimes even melancholy will wash over you as the soft soundtrack echoes during your angling. For a busy person, it's nice to just be able to kick back and enjoy. Sure, your attention may wander as you fish, but I promise that you will be razor focused and on the edge of your seat as you careen towards the navigational buoys that mark safe waters as the sun goes down. Now, I usually try not to get too crunchy when discussing game mechanics because it gets a little much, but Dredge deserves a ton of praise for avoiding needless chaff. This game could have quickly become bloated and tedious with the additions of fuel, shifting market prices, aggressive management of inventory space and weight, tracking wind and currents, but the developers jettisoned those ideas and kept the game focused. By eliminating the tedium of non-essential systems, you get to play more of the game itself. 
You won't ever have to spend a whole gameplay session building up a stockpile of fish just so that you can afford enough gas to get to the next plot event. You won't spend half an hour slowly barging across the map because you loaded your boat to the brim with cod and there's this great merchant on the other side of the world. This gets both massive respect and massive points in my busy people rubric because it shows a ton of restraint and careful thought by the developers into delivering exactly the experience they want. So as a busy person, you aren't gonna have any wasted grind sessions. You'll always be playing, always adventuring, fishing, exploring, guaranteed. Okay, conflict of interest, I have to declare it right now. I have a soft spot for Lovecraftian horror. I'm not a fan of Lovecraft's writing, but the horror that spawned via inspiration is my jam. But I often find there's a thick layer of confusion for confusion's sake. Having brains too puny to understand cosmic entities is one thing, but using language that's obtuse, indirect, and nebulous just feels pretentious and unfun to me. And Dredge sheds that skin and instead focuses on the feeling of ununderstandable horror via very clear implications. The townsfolk that you speak to are guarded, but they're not obtuse. Any on-screen narrations are mysterious, but not fragmented into 400 ellipses statements. It really feels like the lore and the story are fleshed out enough that the writers didn't have to hide behind obscurity, and instead they get to revel in drip-feeding mysteries and threads to you, the player. As a result, the mystery is tangible, and you always feel like you're on the verge of uncovering something incredible. The dread manifests in the art style of the 3D world and the character portraits, the sad, distant soundtrack accompanies each biome with melancholic and nostalgic flair. It's all effectively packaged to invoke the feelings of cosmic, bigger-than-you horror. But it doesn't look down at you for not grasping it all from the get-go. Now, if you can't tell by this longer-than-normal video, I am all in on Dredge. The atmosphere is exceptionally crafted, the gameplay is decidedly pointed, and there's enough to do that you won't get pigeonholed into one singular gameplay loop the whole time. Busy gamers will appreciate the easy access, clever design, and fully realized lore-filled world. You can easily sit down to play for 10 minutes or a couple hours and feel equally accomplished. While it has its horror elements, it isn't going to drive your blood pressure through the roof as you anticipate the next jump scare or something like that. I do warn you though, you may lose track of time altogether. For those reasons and more, I'm giving Dredge 5 totally normal looking fish out of 5 totally normal looking fish. Highly recommended.